All right, so now that we have our database image built and ready for creating containers, let's start deploying or building our application image. As we have mentioned, the application image is going to be based on node.js application server. We are going to create an API out of this application server and it is going to serve the web server using JSON. So let's move one step back and create a directory that is called app. Okay, we do it. We have created it already in the previous lecture. That's okay. So now let's create the Docker file. Okay. So in the Docker file, we are going to need more than just building the Node.js app or installing Node.js. We will need to add some application files. We will need to make some modifications. So our Docker file will look something like this from node, which again is the image that will be used as a base for this image or the image that we are building and the usual run apt get date dash q and apt get this upgrade and dash y and apt get clean and apt get auto clean we already explained why this what this line is for and why we are putting it in one line instead of several lines in the previous lecture Okay, the next thing we're going to do is that we are going to use the expose keyword in Docker file to instruct the image that is going to be exposing or listening at a port. We are going to choose port 3000 for this application. Node.js can listen on any port that you want. However, you should always pick ports that are more than 1024 because anything that is less than 1024 is going to need root privileges to start listening for connections and we do not need the image to run as root we need it to run using the node user so we need to choose any port that is higher than 1024 so we chose port 3000 for this lab and then i'm going to add an environment variable indicated by env for environment environment variable is just as the name suggests a variable that can be used inside the docker file so i can define app path this is the path that our application is going to use. I'm defining it here as a variable so that we can use dollar sign app underscore path in the rest of the file instead of just repeating the path. So our path is going to be slash usr slash share slash app. This is the path where our application will live. If you haven't worked with Node before, it's very easy. It's just one JavaScript file containing some instructions and Node can run this file as an application server and it can listen on whatever port you instruct it to. So this is the path where our files are going to reside. And of course this file must exist first on the image. So I'm going to ensure that it does exist. So I'm going to mkdir-p app path and going to also ensure that this path is owned by node user and node group and notice here how I am adding it again on the same line so that as we mentioned before if I if, if I typed another one statement here it will add an unnecessary layer to the image increasing its size without actually needing it okay next I'm going to use another instruction of a docker file of docker file which is work dire work dire is as if you typed cd some path Okay, if you type cd and you type the path to some file or directory on bash shell, you are going to be standing or working in that directory. So work dire ensures that as if the image or as if Docker has typed cd and then it typed the path that you are going to instruct it to, which is app path. So my working dire now is slash usr slash share slash app. I'm going to use this instruction user node. So now I did two things. I have changed my working directory to be slash usr slash share slash app slash app and I'm using user node to run whatever commands I am instructing the image to do. It is going to copy everything in this directory to to dollar sign app underscore path. Don't forget the trailing slash. Then it is going to run npm install. npm, if you haven't worked with node before, is like the package manager for node. It is used to download and deploy any packages that Node needs to start working correctly. 
in this particular lab, we are going to use some packages like express.js. And those packages will be placed in a file that is called packages.json. And npm will examine the contents of this file and it will automatically install any packages inside this file with the specified versions. So that needs to be done on the image while, while it is built. And we can also use the npm command in order to actually start node like this. So let's save the file and let me explain briefly how node works. So here we are in our working directory. And for node to work, the first thing you're going to need is that you will need to have, as I just mentioned, a file that is called package.json. So package.json will contain JSON formatted data for both the metadata of the application, like the name, the version, how to start it, and so on, and also the dependencies. Actually, we are interested here in the, in the dependencies more than the metadata, but we're going to write both. So the name of our application, we're going to be projects in Docker or PID, like this, PID underscore blog and version. Let that be 1.0, 1, 1 for example, and scripts. We're going to have the start script using node server.js. We're going to create that server.js shortly. Then this is the metadata of the file. Let's move on to the dependencies, which are more important here. Dependencies. We are going to need express.js, which is a package used by JSON to handle several web requests. It is actually very, very common for those who use node.js to develop web applications. We're going to need it here to help us create the API that we need. The version of this is going to be 4.15.4. We're also going to need body parser. Don't worry if you don't understand what those packages do, don't worry. Well, we are interested here in how Docker deals with them, not how they work. So these are just packages that are used by Node to create the necessary API that we need. Finally, Mongoose, and Mongoose is the package that is needed by Node.js to be able to connect easily to MongoDB. Okay, and that's it. Okay, now we have a package.json file. Now, notice a very important thing here. In the Docker file, we mentioned that we need to run npm install on this, or by default, it runs on package.json. But actually, npm install takes a considerably long time to download and deploy the necessary packages. And npm will eventually place those inside a directory that will be created here. It's going to be called node underscore modules. So a trick that I have learned is that we can run npm install. Of course, if you have node.js installed on your host, you can just run npm install here on this directory before deploying it to the application. After all, the application will use everything that is inside this directory, including package.json. So if I run npm install here, it is going to install everything in the package.json file and place it inside this directory. So apparently we have something wrong here. The version here should be 0.0.1. .0 Let's go back and run npm install now. Okay. Now if we examine the contents of the current directory, you're gonna find that we have node modules. The node modules contain everything that is needed by node to run the application with the code that we are going to supply. Next thing we need to do is create our server.js file. This is the file that will be the bootstrap of the application. You don't have to understand it. Just the important parts here is that it's going to use port 3000, as you can see here. So it's going to use either the port provided by an environment variable or it's going to use 3000. And the other important thing here is the URL by which it is going to connect to MongoDB. MongoDB is running on another container. And notice here that this is the IP of the container. At the end of the section, I'm going to show you why we have chosen that particular IP address and not any other. This is the database that is going to be created automatically for us. So I'm going to call it posts. And this is how Node.js can talk to MongoDB using this form of URL. MongoDB colon double slash and the IP address where MongoDB is installed, which is the IP address of the container that we are going to create uh, out of the MongoDB image, then the database name. This database is going to be created if it does not already exist. Next, we're going to use some files, controllers, and views 
this is not of, co of course because this is not a node.js course so i'm not going to go through the details of this i'm just gonna copy and paste those files into our current directory and you're going to find all the source code in the resources folder that accompanies this section so if you have a look here i have pasted a directory that is called api it contains controllers models and routes these are what makes node.js work we will need to copy this entire directory into the slash usr slash share let's look at the docker file again all this is going to be copied inside the application path which is slash usr slash share slash app once these are copied we can run npm install in order to install anything that might be missing from the package JSON or that might have changed it then we're going to use npm start to start the application out of server the js file which is actually inside the same directory here i hope everything is clear and it's gonna get clearer once we start running the containers and launching the application okay so now let's go ahead and build our image let's have a look at our contents of the, the contents of the current directory again the docker file the api containing the application files node modules that we have opted to install offline before copying to copying them to the image package to json and server json now let's run docker build dash t we're gonna call it app we're going to omit the tag and it will default to latest of course you can add whatever tags you want and then add the dot okay so now the image has been built successfully and this lines in red here show that the npm install has been run that is the default output of npm install when there is no description or repository or license fields actually i've managed to make the package the json file as brief as possible just as not to distract you if we clear the screen now and type docker image ls you can see that we have now mongo image the base image node the base image and then the two images that we have built on top of them the database or db and app that brings us to the end of this lecture in the coming lecture we are going to build the final image of our stack which is the web server running nginx so until then take care